Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler and in today's video we are going to be looking at the final installment of human reproduction gestation. Now it's important to know that in this video I'm not going to be looking at the stages of pregnancy but rather the development of an embryo into a fetus. I'm going to look at the protective layers around the embryo as well as how do nutrients and wastes uh, are exchanged between the mother and the fetus. Now, if you're new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Turn your notifications on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. Another exciting announcement I have is many of you have requested for tutorship or one-on-one -on -one lessons with me or just more interaction, more content from me. And so I'm going to be launching my membership and my members only section on my YouTube channel from the 1st of April. In it, there are gonna be so many videos specifically targeted to grade 12s in preparing them for their final exams and making sure they get that distinction. Right, let's get into the first set of embryonic layers. And we're gonna start off with the placenta, a very, very important structure. It's a temporary organ, which means that it only grows during um, a pregnancy. It's the connector between the mother and the embryo that develops. And it plays a really important role in secreting progesterone. And it takes over from the corpus luteum. You'll remember from our menstrual cycle video that the corpus luteum secretes progesterone. Now, progesterone is exclusively used to maintain our pregnancy. And so we need really high levels of it. Now, in order to make the placenta, we are going to use the chorion to do that. And so the chorion over here is this sort of yellow layer that we can see uh, sitting on the outside. It's important it's the outside layer because now you'll see soon that I'm going to show you the amnion, which sits on the inside of that. But the chorion sits just on the outside, and it has a couple of different functions. The first thing the chorion does is it enables there to be a large surface area. The bigger the surface area, the more nutrients, the more wastes can be exchanged. It also has a villi. Now, you'll remember back from your previous grades, villi are those long finger-like extensions um, that grow out of cells. Well, in this instance, these villi are a little bit bigger, but they grow out of the chorion into the wall of the endometrium, and it allows the chorion to attach to the endometrium, and eventually, and very importantly, it will form the placenta. And you can actually see that by our network of blood vessels that are growing through this, and that would have only been possible if we had had a villi. Then let's move on to what we call the yolk sac. Now in humans, the yolk sac provides initial nutrients, but the placenta takes over from this along with the umbilical arteries and veins. Um, it's not a very important structure later on. In other animals like amphibians and fish, the yolk sac is really important. It's where we get most of its nutrients from. But humans don't need a yolk sac because they are viviparous. They are going to rely on getting their nutrients from their mother. And so the yolk sac is almost like a secondary thing. It's, it's not too important. We then go on to the amnion and the amniotic fluid. So I'm going to start off with the amnion at the bottom here. Now, please don't get confused between the chorion and the amnion. I know this diagram looks like they're pointing at the same thing, but please look really carefully. I want you to see that the amnion layer is labeling on the inside and the chorion label line touches the outside. And essentially what the amnion does is it is a layer that secretes the amniotic fluid, this fluid that we see up here. It's all this blue uh, liquid sitting around our embryo. And that particular embryo needs to be cushioned, it needs to be protected, it needs to be supported, and the amniotic fluid also provides um, a, a buffer between temperature change so that it doesn't get too hot or too cold on the inside. And basically, the embryo is floating in the liquid, and it, it provides this like giant airbag so that there's no mechanical damage to the fetus. Now, lastly on our list here is the umbilical cord. Now, you'll notice that the umbilical cord is coming out of our embryo or our fetus over here, and it attaches into its placenta. Now, the purpose of our umbilical cord is a connector between fetus and mother, and it contains two very important blood vessels. It contains the umbilical vein, which goes to the fetus, 
and it contains an umbilical artery which moves away from the fetus. Now, I'm going to elaborate more on that in the next uh, slide, so don't worry if you don't know the differences between those two and why the one is the vein and, and that one is the artery and what do they do, because so I will elaborate. What's important to know for exams and tests on this particular section is you will need to be able to label a diagram like this. You will need to be able to provide the functions for these layers, but you won't be asked to draw this. Now, I wanted to elaborate a little bit further about what's actually happening inside the umbilical cord and what is happening with those veins and arteries. Now, I can guarantee you that there's going to be some question in your paper, in your final exam, that's going to ask you about these veins and arteries. And it's really important you know which one is which. A lot of people get them confused because generally they think that arteries um, are going away from the heart and veins to the heart, or they've got oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood, and we get so caught up that we don't know which one is which. And what's a little bit sneaky about these umbilical veins and arteries is that they're actually opposite to the ones that we would see in an adult. And so a nice way, an easy way to remember these things is as follows. So let's start off with the blood that's going to the fetus, okay? I want you to remember the following. If it is going to the fetus, then we say that it is a vein. Why do we say it's a vein if it's going to the fetus? Because remember the rule of a vein is veins carry blood to the heart. And so what we see in our diagram here is this is the vein at the bottom here. And the vein is carrying oxygenated blood. It's carrying food. It's carrying oxygen. And so that is going to go into the fetus and it's going to go into towards its heart. On the other hand, I want you to think of artery. I want you to think of a way. Arteries take blood away from the heart. And so that means that this artery is going to go away from our fetus and it's going to take its waste products with it. Now, yes, that's very unusual because remember in your adult body, arteries often have oxygenated blood um, and they have nutrients. Where in this case, it's not, uh, it's not what's happening. At the top of the diagram, this is the artery and it's leaving, see, away. So this is our artery up here. And um, the artery is taking away the wastes from the fetus. It's taking deoxygenated blood and wastes. So now we're taking a U-turn here. We're leaving through the umbilical artery up to the mother. It's now up to the mother to do those exchanges. Now, how do they ask this in an exam? Well, generally they ask you, what is the uh, constituents of the blood? Like, what does the blood contain? Does it contain oxygen? Does it contain wastes? You need to know what are the components in the umbil uh, umbilical vein? So what is in it? Oxygenated blood and food. What is in the umbilical artery? Wastes and deoxygenated blood. Please know, one more time, that the vein goes to the embryo and the artery away. Now, as always, I like to do a terminology recap at the end of my lessons, and you can use all of these words for your flashcards to study from. You can turn these words into questions, and all of this is great active recall for when you're studying for tests and exams. So let's run through them very quickly. We speak about embryos and we speak about a fetus. Essentially, they're different stages of development. An embryo is shortly after implantation within the first eight weeks. If we're talking about a fetus, we are talking about a much more advanced developed organism. We're talking about nine weeks onwards. This is when a um, organism like a human starts to look more like a human, maybe a few arms, maybe a head at this point. Then we spoke about our amniotic layers, and we started off looking at the chorion. Now, the chorion is the outermost membrane. It surrounds the amnion, and it surrounds the embryo, and it grows these chorionic villi. And chorionic villi are there to provide a large surface area for attachment to the endometrium, but also to exchange substances. 
Now that carrion and that carionic villi eventually grow into the placenta. They form the placenta. And the placenta is a temporary organ and it's got a lot of important functions. It assists in diffusing oxygen and food substances. It assists in removing fetal waste, maternal antibodies. It's a barrier for protection against viruses. And the most important thing it does is it secretes progesterone. And that is the hormone that maintains pregnancy. And it takes over that job from our corpus luteum. We then moved on to the amnion and the amniotic fluid. It is a layer surrounding the uh, um, fetus and it secretes the fluid and the fluid acts as a buffer. It acts as a support system and it prevents any mechanical injury so that the fetus can just float in that liquid. Lastly, we looked at the umbilical cord, and the umbilical cord connects the fetus to the, um, to the placenta, and inside that particular um, structure, we find the umbilical artery, which one more time, remember, is a blood vessel that's going away from the fetus, whereas the umbilical vein is going to the fetus. The umbilical artery um, is filled with deoxygenated blood and waste, and the umbilical vein is filled with oxygen and nutrients. Now, as always, if you've liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and keep your eyes peeled for my announcement of my membership, which will be the 1st of April. You can look out for a video that's going to be posted very soon on my YouTube channel explaining how memberships work and how you too can join. I'll see you all again soon. Bye.